1600 Penn is the address of the White House. And we need to start off with that basic understanding because that's essentially, at its core, what the show's about. It's about an address like any other, where a dysfunctional family like any other lives. In this case, it happens to be the first family of the United States. There's the father, whose day job is president, and his son, whose day job is ruining the president's image. And there is his stepmother, played by the lovely Miss Jenna Elfman, um, and a couple of kids sprinkled in there. I have three siblings in all. And essentially what we set out to do was create a show about any family, any given family in America. But in this particular case, they happen to be a family in the most extraordinary of circumstances. And I think it's a really cool thing to explore because, you know, as as the years are going by, as the 21st century is going by, we're getting closer and closer to some extreme families entering into the White House domain, I think. And, and to me, there's something really cool about that. There's something cool about seeing blemishes, seeing kids who aren't necessarily what your parents would like them to be, you know, always kind of making things very vulnerable for, for the presidency. I play Skip Standrich Gilchrist. Uh, Skip is a thorn in his father's side. He is, much like you can see right now, <laughs> just a, a bit of a mess trying to fit in. He's a bull in a china shop, we like to say. And when we first meet Skip, he is getting out of this chaotic situation where he almost burns down a frat house and it's caught on all of these mobile cameras and transmitted through YouTube and you know if ever there were a son not to be the son of the president in the age of the 24 hour media cycle Skip is the guy he uh, he's more often than not getting everybody in into some bit of heat when it comes to the news you know Skip is at his core, he's he's this lovable dog. Um, he absolutely means well. He just really does a great job of screwing everything up without meaning to do so. Um, and at the end of the day, despite some of his goofiness, despite some of his craziness, he he has a way with getting through to people. And you know, throughout the series, I think his dad and his family find that to be a real asset and a great attribute. Um, because there is this chaotic whirlwind side to him, but he also has this beautiful sense of understanding what other people need and want and translating that and cutting through all the kind of red tape. When I first signed up for this job, I specifically said two things I don't want to do are sing and dance because I just got off of a job where I sing and dance. I'm in the second freaking episode and I'm dancing and singing and I'm very angry about it. But they were just like, well, there aren't many things you can do, so we've just got to utilize those skills. So it'll be like, I think every other episode, they'll, they'll put me in a situation where I have to dance. Which by the way, I'm, I don't understand why because I'm not a good dancer. But they're just like, but it's funny when fat guys dance. So we just want you to just move across the camera because America will laugh if you try to do it in rhythm. If the show doesn't go well after like episode two, if ratings start to plummet, it'll become smash in the White House, I think. So please watch. I'm begging you. Because we you don't want to you don't want to see what what could happen. The alternative is going to be disastrous. Nobody was hired for that. When Jason Weiner and I first came, when we first came up with this idea of doing this thing about a dysfunctional family living in the White House, we knew that it needed a certain authenticity that you couldn't just get away with, you know, fun stuff like throwing chairs out of windows, which by the way we do. 
um, or burning down frat houses, which, by the way, we do. The more I'm thinking about this, the more I wonder what show we set out to make originally. But we do all these things, and we said to ourselves, if we're going to do the kind of fun, chaotic stuff that we want to do, you need to ground it with a real sense of the political world that we're setting it against. And this kid's name came up. Everybody was like, well, there's this kid, John Lovett. And John's getting into writing. And I'm like, oh, great. Well, we don't need somebody we're going to give a start to. What we didn't realize was that this kid, John Lovett, is this brilliant young 20-something guy whose day job was working as a speechwriter for the president of the United States. And all of a sudden, our ears perked up and we're like, oh, my God. You know, here's a guy who knows that world who's operated in that world, who's got a wicked sense of humor and an incredible mind for politics. And when you put those things together, you get a show like this. And so it just wound up being the perfect, the perfect piece that we were looking for. I think that more than ever in the age of media that we're in right now, Everybody wants to get to know their politicians. They want, you know, there's this polling nonstop about likability, likability. We want to sit down and have a beer with the president. We want to sit down and we want to talk to the guy. We want to know what that's like when they're sitting around here talking about school or talking about, you know, who they're dating. There's something absolutely relatable. It's, it's a wish fulfillment kind of thing oh, I could be like that, or wow, what would that be like? They're just like us. And that's what we want to show. We want to show a family that's just like us, but that happens to be living in 1600 Pennsylvania Avenue.